Hey, we're back from vacation. Welcome to another episode of FR Racing's Garage Talk. I'm DJ Flook. I'm Eric Richardson. We have a lot of announcements to make. You know, we were both on vacation and we have some racing uh, discussion to tie in with that. But first off, yesterday was basically the one year anniversary of FR Racing forming. One year. Can you believe that? It's amazing how quickly it's gone. Um, just feel like we just got started. I, and I was, I put up a, a post on Instagram and I just started kind of listing out things and it's just, it's unreal. The progress that has been made in one year. It was just, yeah, you know, this is kind of a discussion where you're like, Hey man, we wish we could have brought this, you know, made this happen. I'm like, well, maybe there is a way and not the way we originally anticipated, but, uh, I, I would say this has been a wildly successful first year. And couldn't have asked for anything more. It's been fun just seeing it build and progress and the, see what this next year brings. The, the second part of it is just in time for a one year anniversary, we have become Twitch affiliates. So I'm sporting the, uh, oops, sporting the Twitch shirt this year or today. So uh, we're, we're excited to have hit that milestone right before our one year anniversary. I mean, we didn't, our first Twitch stream was that Charlotte race in September of last year where, uh, you know, we took each other out. <laughs> during the uh, that race. was more me with a controller and no yeah. first wheel race and it wasn't calibrated properly. Yeah. So that, that was a struggle for you. I mean, I, you know, I, I, uh, won that race, but I was think I was like 10 laps up on you because you just couldn't keep the car on the track because of the, the calibration I but obviously you got it was over close that. to like 20 or 25 laps it was bad yeah it's it's you've you've managed to come a long way since that that first incident and uh our, yeah, you know, I, in, it's helped a lot arguably not even arguably like you've surpassed me i don't think there's any question about that uh generally but um, before we move on, I think we need to, one, I didn't start the clock, so I have no idea where we are time-wise. I should probably do that. Uh, this is <clears throat> helling, I know. Um, but I think, you know, we, obviously this was, this is staged, but we, uh, I think a shot of Malort is in order here to celebrate our first year. I would agree with that. Okay. The timeline is, or the stopwatch is on. So I've pre poured my Malort. It's still early morning here. So I'm not, you know, I don't have nearly as much. Uh, Jepson's Malort. We, I have mine in my Indy 500 uh, mini yeah. milk jug. Same thing. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's not milk. It's not a full size jug, but hey, Jepson's Malort. It works. Here we go. Cheers. All right. It gets easier. It still has that aftertaste, but after going through a few bottles of this stuff, okay, now it's starting to come on a little bit more. It's so weird how it has that delayed aftertaste. Where it tastes so good when it first goes down, and at least for me, it's like jet fuel going down my esophagus. <laughs> good endorsement of the of the company there. Actually, that's you know for those who don't, I mean, you should know if you followed us by now. But I mean, Jepson's Malort. They, they, this is a Chicago based product that was known for being bad. And this is actually originally created during prohibition. And, uh, it was actually marketed as a medicine and all the prohibition inspectors were like, Oh, that, that could be because nobody would recreationally drink this. And it's kind of become uh, or built its cult following in Chicago. And as people have kind of left and branched out of Chicago and come and gone and visited, uh, it, the, the brand has, has grown as well. So Jepson's Malort, the logo on the side of my car during Wednesday night dash, you know, thank you for your encouragement. You know, they sent a, a care package a while ago with their excellent bourbon. Um, but I'm thank you for trying the bourbon still the, the bourbon is, is e the bourbon's <laughs> excellent and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty tough. It's, you know, it's twice, almost twice as much alcohol as a, a shot of Jack Daniels. So, um, I, I didn't make that connection when I had my first drink with it. And I was like, Whoa, this is hitting pretty hard. Then I look and see that it's like 118 proof or something. <laughs> like 
Yeah, this season, along with your Malort truck, I've been running the Jepson's Bourbon truck. The Jepson's Bourbon. So there you go. Check them out. Jepson's Malort, uh, Jepson's Malort, at Jepson's Bourbon on social media. Uh, they embrace that. It's terrible. Uh, we're not shaming the 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 brand at all. This is the purpose of it. It's it's hilarious. Trick your friends. Good party trick. Yeah, if you want to have fun, take it to a party and record the reaction. Uh, on that note, we were on vacation last week. There was no show. There was no Wednesday night dash. We're back this week. Uh, Eric was on the Atlantic coast in the Atlantic ocean. I was in on the Pacific coast on the Pacific ocean. And we made some track visits. Uh, mine vastly different from yours. You want to go into your visits? Yeah. You know, started off going to Daytona. It's been maybe 20 years since I was there. So it was fun to go back and see the museum and get a, go around the track and, you know, never ceases to amaze me just seeing the banking up close of just how steep it is. And the fun fact about it, if you don't go 70 miles an hour, your rear end is going to fall off the banking. <laughs> So you got to maintain speed to stay on it. Otherwise, you're just going to slide down and drive sideways. That's hilarious. A and, and a little scary, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the banking is just something you don't really truly understand. I mean, Phoenix is banking. I've taken my personal vehicle out on that track. And I can't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it's like 20. I mean, it's nowhere near Daytona. But, I mean, it's more than Indianapolis. And, and you know, I'm in an, a little SUV and my wife's like, are we going to flip over? I'm like, no, we'll be fine. But still, I mean, it's still nothing compared to, you know, Daytona, Talladega. Yeah, things. they're, uh, what, 31 degrees, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Believe like, it or not, not the steepest bank track on the circuit. That belongs to Bristol. That's right. That they're is, at, I believe, 36. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's just amazing how, how different that, you know, these, you know, you're, an oval with four turns and how vastly different you can make them from, you know, the turns, the straightaways, the bankings. I mean, it's just amazing. You they, also yeah, hit. Daytona is amazing. It's it, the I have not, I have actually never been there. It's, it's on my list of things to do. I, I, I need to get to a 500 or uh, at the very least, I need to get to the track and visit the museum. I have not done that. And yeah, the museum is cool. Bucket list item for me is to make the Daytona 500 one year. And you have, you also hit up the Carolinas too on your way back. Yeah, we drove up through Virginia, had a former diver of mine, um, went to her wedding. So congratulations to them. But on the way, we actually drove right past Darlington. So I didn't know what to expect there. That was my first time going by. I actually didn't get a chance to do the tour just because of time constraints. But driving by the track and getting to see it, it is not located anywhere near what I thought it was. Darlington is a very small, sleepy little town. Yeah, and that's all they're known for, which is which is crazy. I mean, you look at it too on the the classic NASCAR tracks. You look at you know Martinsville, Rockingham, which you know you'll talk about that in a second. North Wilkesboro. I mean, these are not major cities. Like these are tiny towns and you know very small towns that like they're known because they have the track. Yeah, and you know, I got spoiled having gone to Indianapolis in April and then for the 500 in May, and then a few days prior going to Daytona, going to the mecca of motorsports basically between those two, and then seeing Darlington. Like, Whoa, where were we at? And if you thought Darlington was kind of rural, Rockingham, I think, was even more so. <laughs> the only thing by the track was fields of parking. And then the um, drag strip was right across the street. Oh, wow. And out in front by their sign, it says The Rock. They have two granite boulders. <laughs> I guess that, that so makes they have sense. The Rock. But it's cool. They have names etched into them there, I believe, of race winners there. Um, some of them going back as far as like Cale Yarbrough. Wow. That's, so it was kind uh, of fun to see that. Historic. I mean, maybe maybe one day the Cup Series will make their way back there. I think that would be pretty awesome if they did i mean it's, it's a classic no, I, had a, I had a fun thought maybe can rile up nascar a little bit here but it's a small track and they, yeah you know I, we've talked about it <laughs> it's a small track and they always had trouble gaining attendance and you know the all-star race isn't maybe widely watched but 
let's bring back the All Star Race to a classic track. Let's take the All Star to the Rock. Yeah, and especially too, like in it, from its proximity from Charlotte, they're there. The you know the way they've scheduled it is Charlotte's right after that. I mean, logistically, wouldn't wouldn't be hard exactly. for the teams. You know, they no, just not far at all up up the road to Charlotte and. You're ready for the the Coca Cola 600 the following week. Yes, I think it'd be fine. I would. I would look into. I know last year at some point they were looking at repaving the track to maybe bring a race back in the future. So maybe that'd be a great way to get Rockingham back in the schedule. There you go. We'll start our campaign. Bring back the Rock. Yeah, there we go. Hashtag Bring Back the Rock. (laughs) Actually, not Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, then Dwayne Johnson would be like, "What? Where did I go? (laughs) I didn't know I ran away." Yeah, we might have to work on that hashtag a little bit, but yeah, um, I don't do hashtags. Yeah, well, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll we'll put that with our social media team. Um, my visits, on the other hand, didn't go as expected. I was hoping to swing by Fontana and and take a look at Auto Club. Uh, traffic dictated otherwise, and we had been in the car with two young children for several hours and a couple hours longer than we originally planned so i uh, i i unfortunately had to cancel the visit to fontana however on my last day of vacation i ended up going into long beach and i took my family vehicle out and more or less drove the uh, long beach grand prix circuit where indycar goes every year uh formula one is raced there in a variation of the the course in the past and i mean that circuit revitalized that area and turned it from uh kind of the you know kind of a shipping port into actually this whole there's an aquarium there's a convention center there's all this shopping down there i mean it's a really cool area and i think you know it's one of those i want to get out there and and see a race there but um it's just so weird that you know you're driving on this and there's there's markings and there's barricades where you can see where the the roads are closed off that that are there um especially when you come out of turn nine and ten which are in a private parking lot and you get to to turn eleven on the big hairpin before you get back to the, the start finish line. I mean, that's, that's actually, there's a cut between the median and the road and they have barricades blocking it that they just move those barricades to make turn 11 uh, every year for the road, which is really cool. So um, the videos on YouTube, the videos on stadium scene TV uh, you can see more or less the course, you know, obviously I, you know, I'm driving through the pits because other, if I was driving on the actual course, I'd be driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, if I, I want to get fun though, yeah, well, uh, entertaining, maybe yeah, yeah, legal. I might have to call, call a lawyer, which would be a problem. Um, you know, you get to the fountain, uh, turn two and three, uh, it, you, you know, obviously I got to go counterclockwise, but if I would have, you know, gone clockwise, I'd be on the wrong side of the road. So it's, it's not a hundred percent accurate, but you get the idea. I mean, you yeah, it gives you a great idea of we, seeing it. And I put the iRacing screenshots in as I hit certain markers and certain turns so you can see like it's pretty darn accurate. I mean, this the iRacing probably I I, I want to say it was like 2017, 2018 when they most recently scanned the course, but it's still pretty darn accurate. Pretty, pretty awesome. So yeah, it's been fun checking out tracks and you got to do that at Long Beach. I've done that with Belle Isle. So it's fun to be able to do those things and see where they actually race. All right. Very briefly, we're going to get into the, uh, the pros. Um, NASCAR had a lot of weather delays in Nashville. Formula One IndyCar were all off last weekend. Our, our friend Bernard Pollard who races with us. He was, uh, he lives outside in Nashville. So it, that was his home race. He was there getting soaked. Uh, I'm not sure if he has dried out yet from that race or not. Uh, I need to reach out. He wasn't available for, to race with us this week, but, um, you know, Chase Elliott wins. You know, if, uh, that was what, second win on the year now, I believe so. And Alex Bowman, uh, was wrecked by Corey LaJoy. They got into a little scuffle on social media and through the press, uh, you know, and, and if it wasn't for that, they would have probably hit the halfway point before the big, you know, two plus hour rain delay and chase would not have won. So, um, Alex wrecking out, got Hendrick a win more or less. Uh, so other than that, they're back on the road course at road America this weekend, formula ones at Silverstone. 
and IndyCar is at Mid Ohio. So a lot of uh, a circuit racing this weekend. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch. I'm gonna try to catch as much as I can. I'm actually running up to Frankenmuth, Michigan, to watch some fireworks. So we'll the see Christmas what I can town. Catch. Yep, indeed. We uh, what's largest Christmas store is up there? Yeah, my uh, my uh, my wife has been there. She's from well, lived a lot of her life in Michigan and spent some time there. And her her and her friend would go up there every year during college for a Christmas visit. And we have several christmas ornaments uh you know from from that town so yep very familiar with that on that note we're gonna go into wednesday night dash uh went into darlington after the off week and it's a tough track i mean there's there's a reason why it's called the track too tough to tame the lady in black um it's it's aggressive it's small you not a lot of know. room when I was there, I did look in the gift shop and they had a magnet that just said, got stripes. <laughs> I almost got it, but it wasn't in too good a shape. It was the last one, but yeah, uh, all sorts of names there. I mean, I think especially after driving on it in a race <laughs> after the visit, I, I'm sure you have a new appreciation for what, what you saw in person there. Yeah, it, it's a wild track and there's a reason cars come out of there beat up and missing their right sides i i just you will slide up to the outside and you run up high yeah and if you just do not time it right oh you are going into the wall and i i had a very rough first half of the race um the other awkward thing is the pit entrance and the commitment cone a couple of the drivers missed the commitment cone and were black flagged during the race for the the improper pit entry and uh couple couple pit speeding violations there uh it's it's tough and then you know a second half of the race i'm like hey i think i've got the hang of this and then like five laps later i just completely demolished my truck and try to make it around to get into the pit and my truck broke down 10 feet from the pit stall and i'm just like you know what i'm done i going back out there i'm already 20 laps down at this point uh no reason to to go back out there all i'm going to do is just ruin in the race for someone who's competing for a podium but speaking of podiums someone here got a podium and it wasn't me yeah it ended up in third i'm not too sure how but managed to battle back but before talking about that um congrats to colton gardner yeah okay. colton what a race yeah uh colton man i went back and watched some of his run I think it's his home track. I think. Don't quote me on that, but I mean, he is from the Carolina region. I think he considers Darlington his home track. And watching it, you can tell he has put in a lot of work on that track. It was a near flawless run. He led start to finish. It was just, I was watching the replay. I was just in awe how well he handled it. I mean, he had a, a 16 second lead at the end. Um, he may have been the only one too to not snag a Darlington stripe. Yeah, he um, he had a two X incident count, but I mean, whatever it was, it didn't impact him too much because just just watching the replay, it was just very smooth around, good speed, kept the car clean. I mean, it was just totally a dominant run. So congrats to him. I mean, when we when he found us last uh, last season and raced with us in Phoenix and gave gave Chad Winstead um, a, a run for his money at Phoenix, we we knew he was going to be a a, a, a top competitor here with the series. So congrats to to Colton, uh, awesome awesome job last week. And you know, Caden McRavy had a really yes. good run. So yes, he did. Yes, on the lead lap. Yeah, Caden had another great run. He won previous week um, in Charlotte and and had another another fantastic run top three um so you know we we've really excited this season the the level of competition especially the top tier of drivers has really stepped up it's a lot more balanced this time around um so it's uh you know very excited where we we are at with this series and you know we're halfway through we're going to be off next week for the fourth of july week uh, we'll be back and do some super speedway racing at Talladega. Well, and stay posted too, as we are looking at maybe doing an exhibition race of some sort next week in the in lieu of Wednesday Night Dash. Yep. We haven't quite decided on what we're going to do yet. 
or if we will. I, I think we'll do something. I don't know what yet, but we should probably make that decision soon. Wednesday will be here before we know it. Maybe go just completely rookie and wing sprint cars at Kokomo. <laughs> <laughs> the hometown track for both of us. So if you want to see a mess of a race, uh, maybe we'll put that together. I, you know, I've been out there a couple of times in, on the, the dirt track in, in Kokomo with a sprint car. And I'm just like, I don't understand this at all. <laughs> I have not been in a sprint car yet. It, it's just, I see these people, I'm watching them on Twitch and, and YouTube or whatever. And, you know, you're making left turns, but you have your, your wheel turned all the way to the right as you're sliding through the turns. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I try to do it and it just, you know, I'm upside down. Yeah, we're like, looking a couple of weeks from now till we get to do that with Bristol in the trucks. Yeah, that terrifies the crap out of me too. Um, we we uh, there may have been some drinking involved when we put the schedule together, and some evil laugh as yeah, we put Coda, we put Darlington, we put Dirt Bristol, we put Lucas Oil in the Raceway Park on there. Like, what were we thinking? <laughs> I don't know what we were thinking, but you know, it's going to be it's, fun uh, and challenging to the drivers Je jepson's malort i think may have been involved there or probably just beer but hey you know yeah they know we're having fun with it so they know we do have some fun races coming up talladega here in two weeks then um lucas oil then we get the fun of bristol and then we cap it off with phoenix yep and then uh we'll do some recruiting races in the month of august and probably after labor day we'll start the final 2022 season with a wrapping up uh right after thanksgiving um looks like right. we're gonna go arca, go for... arca. yeah that that'll be interesting arca Maybe. one step above street stocks <laughs> it'd be fun if we designated one arca breaks no, 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 that might. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to get the uh, get the get cliche and kind of no, copy there. Not at all. No, no it's I fun. Mean, Check out Arca Bricks Weekly. They're hilarious to watch. Yeah, it just it's very cringe worthy hearing people just insult each other. But you know, it's it's a fun watch. So free plug to them. Uh, on that note, uh, any closing thoughts, Eric, before we wrap up this week? No, you know, it's been a lot of fun racing, um, Darlington. Wanted to pull my hair out too, but that's why I actually don't have any now. <laughs> um, no, let's get ready for Talladega. And, and it's been a year. Thank you to everybody who's followed along and yes. given us props or helped us out, even just giving us advice. Um, Rogue, Rogue Energy, much. Hydrate Spark. You know, we got the the Hydrate Spark. It, it this bottle has changed my life, and I that sounds again cliche, but it is not. It it is the truth. It's, I, I am at 303 days in a row of hitting a water goal, water consumption goal, which generally is more or less around a gallon a day. A um, little less on the less active days, maybe a little bit more on the more active days, but uh, it is completely changed how I feel, I, I, just how I sleep. It just water is, is you know, it's the key to life. And, you know, Printful, Player One Coffee, Priority Tire, uh, Philip Hue, um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple in here. Uh, Bluehost. Bluehost, yeah. Great. Um, so thank you to everybody out there too. So on that note, we'll wrap up our longest episode. We promised 10 to 15 minutes. We lied. This one's going to be like 25. So uh, thanks for We're, watching. Sorry, we'll try and do it better next time. Yeah, yeah. you know, I we once we talk, we don't shut up. So it's, that's the moral of my life for sure uh frracingonline.com at fr racing on all the major social media platforms and uh streaming channels and uh we'll see you next wednesday well actually no we won't see you next wednesday night um actually eh, probably, some one of us will be on the stream probably and then uh otherwise we'll see you next week with another episode of uh garage talk see thanks everybody time. take care